Bismillah ar-Rahman The beneficence, the merciful. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon his last and final messenger, Muhammad, his companions, his household, and all those who believe in him until the end of time. I would like to welcome you to yet another session of our tafsir in which we are trying to understand the message sent to us by Allah and act on them positively so that we will be among those inshallah who will succeed in the next world and who will succeed in this world and to as much as, as possible abstain from anything that will warrant uh, punishment upon us in this world. Uh, we are in Surah Al-Baqarah and uh, we are in the verses in which Allah is de describing the traits, the attributes, the characters of the hypocrites, the munafiqun. And Allah has taken so much time to describe to us the attitudes of the hypocrites so that we will not behave in any way like them. Yesterday we were able to see uh, and understand verse 8 of the, of the chapter. And inshallah, today in our lesson we will discuss uh, verse number nine so that we will see what Allah is telling us as to how to understand, to recognize the, uh, the hypocrites, the, 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 the monafikun among, amongst us. Uh, the Prophet says, Munafiq Thalathan, Firwaya Arba. Signs or the attributes of a hypocrite, hypocrite, hypocrite are three. In the Hadatha Kadaba, one of the one of the attributes of, of a hypocrite is when he, te when he talks, whatever he says, there are elements of lies. He, he speaks lies. In order, in order to impress the people that uh, he is a good storyteller. So he will blend, even if, if that thing is a fact, he will blend it with lies to make people impressed of his art of storytelling. And when he promises to do something, he will betray, he will not, he will not, he will not fulfill the, the promise. Even common timing, let's meet 10 o'clock, let's come 10 10.30, let's come tomorrow, he will not come. He will not honor any invitation, any appointment. He won't honor it. He will not come on time. And this, not actually the Africans, African time. So when you say 10 o'clock, you mean 2 o'clock. When you say 6.30, you mean 10.30. And uh, they will even energize you when you do that. When everybody has actually arrived on time and the person, the, 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 the celebrant is actually maybe comes after two hours. The person that 1,000 people will be waiting for him, will be waiting for his arrival. They are abusing him, belittling him but he will even give them money when they are just getting him. 
this is wrong. It's wrong. Therefore, when we come to, inshallah, uh, in the course of our lessons, I will, inshallah, explain to you further. Alam, read for us verse number nine. Bikhari wa nallaha wa alladhina amanu. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Yukhadi'oon allaha wa alladhina amanu. Wa ma yakhda'oon illa anfusahum wa ma yash'oon. Okay. Sorry, I have only mentioned two out of the three or four I was talking about. Uh, and one who is interested with anything, he will, he will, when he's given money to, to keep or power to govern people or anything, then he will, exp, he will uh, make his misconduct apparent. For people to see, he will, he will the, the trust given to him, he will not keep it firm. Just like what we are seeing now, our politicians they promise us the honey, the milk, but we don't even get water to drink. We never see them until after four years. They never discuss our problems. They always discuss their problems. They want new cars, bulletproof. They want different houses. They want the house to, to be renovated every year. They, the whole budget is, is theirs. All the money is for the country, it belongs to them. So, this is a terrible thing. We entrust them, they betray us. They betray us. وَإِذَا خَاسَ مَا فَجَرٌ And when ensued, uh, you become wild, and you become big uh, in him. This is not a good Muslim. These are the four traits of hypocrites. Nafikun. Subhanallah. So Allah says, Yukhadi'oon Allah wa alladhina amanu. Yukhadi'oon Allah, they think they receive Allah and those who believe. By exposing Iman, by showing that they are Muslims outwardly, by saying prayers in congregation with the Muslims, by attending meetings, community meetings with the Muslims, by doing any other thing with the Muslims openly. They think they are receiving Allah. They think Allah doesn't know what is inside them. That is, this is deception. It's a deception because you cannot deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ amanu And those who believe, and the believers say, Alhamdulillah, we are now, our number is increasing. No. Allah said, They receive no one but themselves. But they're not aware of it. They think they receive Allah, but it is themselves they receive. The deception comes back to them. Because there's no how you can deceive Allah and the true believers of Allah. Allah will always protect the believers, his followers, his believers. He will protect them against any deception of the hypocrites. And they think they receive Allah and those who believe. Without them knowing that what they are doing is as open as anything before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, you had the owner of Salam, they, 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 they when, when Allah says, you had the owner of Allah, Allah, then Amanu, because they're not, they're not in, in, in conversation with Allah, they're not speaking with Allah directly. 
So when Allah says, يُخَادِئُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا it's, because it's, it's like Allah is, is, is telling us, even though they are deceiving the Prophet and, his, and, and the Muslims and the believers, they are showing them they are Muslim, but they are not Muslims. So when you deceive somebody whom, who, whom Allah SWT has ac accepted as a good believer, you are deceiving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other way, Allah is, Allah is what? Is telling us that. Their deceptions against the Prophet and the companions is as though they are deceiving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But can they deceive Allah? No. So they can't deceive the Prophet and the Messenger because Allah will always reveal to the Prophets what they are telling, what they are uh, what they are organizing, what are, what, are, what are their deceptions, even when they are doing that in the night. Allah will, in the morning, reveal to the Prophet that these people have said this, uh, and they, are, they are, are, are ready to do this and that, and so safe, safeguard yourself. The argument is, they receive no one but Allah, means that the result of what they do is that they only deceive themselves. There's a saying, whoever tries to deceive someone who is not deceived, has deceived himself. If you try to deceive somebody who is more wise than you, who is wiser than you, then definitely it is yourself that you are deceiving. So Allah that is all-knowing, you would think you can deceive him? That's a joke. So you can't deceive Allah. This is true because deceit can only occur in respect of someone who doesn't know the inward reality of what you are trying to do against him. Any attempt to deceive someone who knows what is really going or what is really going on is in fact inevitably self-deceit. That's why Allah SWT said, they don't feel they are doing they are what they are doing. They don't think. They don't feel they are deceiving themselves. They think they are deceiving Allah. They are deceiving the Prophet and and his as, as believers. So what Allah is saying is that, no matter what a hypocrite actually agree to do against the believers, Allah will always reveal to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Continue, madam. <laughs> They will continue deceiving or trying to deceive the Muslims because they are sick. Inside them, they are sick. Allah says, There is sickness in their hearts. Their hearts is, is sick. A sick of hypocrisy, of nifaq. And Allah, Fazadhumullahu Marada, and Allah in return will increase their sickness. So they will never understand the truth. Because the the, the, the hypocrites will, will want to uh, we want to the Muslim to accept him as Muslims and also the kuffar as, as their as allies. So that is sickness in them. They will have a painful punishment. They will have painful punishment on account of their denial. On account of their denial or not accepting the truth or, what, or, or, the, or, or of their lies. Whatever they say to the Muslims is not true. Because they're not telling the, they're not telling the, the truth of what exactly is in their hearts. They are, they are saying things that will make the Muslim believe that they are part of them. While they are not. In the words sickness in their hearts, Allah says, um, Allah says, a sickness in their hearts. Sickness is a metaphor for the corruption and dishonesty 
caused by their lack of faith. Corruption, corrupting the truth, showing corruptive behavior is all sickness that is inherent in the minds of the hypocrites. That is either doubt and hypocrisy or denial and repudiation. When you don't accept the truth as it is and you want to skew the truth to fit what you want, then such a person is hypocrite. The meaning is that their hearts are sick since they lack the protection, success, and support which came from Islam. When Allah says, For that whom Allah murder, Allah uh, uh, increase upon them doubts and hypocrisy on top of their disbelief and lack of support and lack of power. Allah will not make them succeed because they will always think they are, on the, they are deceiving the Muslims, but in fact, they will not succeed because Allah has protected the Muslims and stand for them and stand against the hypocrites in whatever they try to or they plan to do or the plots against the Muslims. So this ayah indicates the permission to pray against the hypocrites. When somebody is plotting against you and you, are, you realize that Allah allows you to pray in seeking Allah to protect you from him and seeking Allah to, um, to, to be on top of him, not to harm you. And also to, to, to pray to Allah to return to him in the same coin what is plotting against you. This is allowed in Islam. Oh Allah, destroy that person who is trying to destroy me. Oh Allah, pay him back with the same coins what is plotting against me. This is all allowed. You understand? So indeed, one possibility is that the words actually are supplications against them but the meaning may Allah increase their sickness. Fazadhumullah barada. May Allah increase their sickness because they will never succeed. Because a hypocrite is somebody who chooses to, to remain in between the believers and the he would like to be safe with the Muslims and safe with the disbelievers, which is, not, which is not possible. They are doing this to protect their provisions, to protect their wealth, to protect their families, to protect whatever they own, their status in the family, in the society. They don't want to be blamed of the, of the, of the disbelievers, and they don't, they, don't want the, they, they don't want to blame of the Muslims. So they want to be praised by Muslims and also the disbelievers. This is not true. They said you cannot, you can't go, continue to be a good egg. Keep an egg, fresh egg, keep it. After a while, it will turn to a bad egg or it will hatch. It will either hatch or turn bad. So you cannot be, you can't, ha you can't have, you can't eat your cake and still have it. So you cannot be 100% loyal to the Muslims and 100% loyal to the disbelief. 50, no, it's also possible. It's either just like the during the, the, the Gulf War when Bush said, it's either it is either you are with us or against us. So the world was divided into two. Either you support Bush to, to kill Saddam and all the Muslims around, or you support Saddam and America will be against you. Your economy will be ruined. Your, your savings in America will be, will be frozen. Uh, you will be banned from traveling to America and Europe, and so, 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 like, so, so, so forth. This is... You have to take a stand. You have to get. You can't please America and China. 
You can be a friend to America 100% and be a friend to China 100%. You cannot be a friend to, to Russia 100% and a friend to America 100%. You're either with America or with, or with Russia. This is the world now. The world is divided into two. That's why we were bribed by, by Ukraine. Because we are, we are in dear poverty here in Nigeria, where we don't have food to eat. So Ukraine that is, is under war is giving us food, what to eat. This is a shameful thing to happen to us. When we have, we have lands that we can feed the whole of Africa. We can feed the entire Africa. Allah has given us the land. Good land. In Nigeria you can farm anything. What is growing in China can be found in Nigeria. What is being grow, growing in America, in Russia, in any part of the world, can, we have the land here in Nigeria. We have the weather here in Nigeria. You can see our source. Even water. We don't have enough water to drink. Why are we going to be a, 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 a nation? When I want to be a country that is self-sufficient, that's independent, when are we going to be that? We're talking about light, electricity, we don't have. Today, what is being distributed in Nigeria is, is under 3,000 megawatts. When some countries that are, are are not as rich as Nigeria. They have 50,000 megawatts extra reserved. They don't experience blackout. They don't. Here we experience blackout every day. You have tap in your house, you want water, no water. Water board, I could not pay salaries to, 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 to its staff. So there's no water, they are on strike. Everybody's on strike, no fuel. You will buy, yes, we will buy the fuel at the price the government says, but there's no fuel in the filling stations. So what kind of life are we actually experiencing? Can we call Nigeria an independent nation, a prosperous nation, a self-sufficient nation? What's wrong with us? Is it the fault of Nigeria as a nation or the fault of Nigerians as people? Is it the fault of the masses as voters or the fault of the elected are the leaders. What's the problem of Nigeria? What, what is our problem? What are our problems? Has anybody caused Nigeria? Therefore, we have to weed out the monarchy. Those who do, who do not want Nigeria to, to, to actually develop. Those who do, who do not want Nigeria to progress. We have to put them out by not voting them. No matter how, how, how much they give. No matter how many endemi and, and spaghetti they give us. And maggi and soup. We shouldn't accept their maggi and, and, soup and, and spaghetti and, and soup. How can a nation develop? Apply to with maggi and spaghetti and subhanallah we have problems we have to sit down and and discuss our problems and find ways to get out from the problems Qala fazadahum Allah warjana ila rasim and Allah says it adds defilement to their defilement The pains in which the munafiqun are suffering is increased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fazadahum Allah wa rijisan, rijisan, befallments upon defilement. When in Surah Al-Azab, Allah says to the Prophet Sallallahu that take this warning to the hypocrites. Take it to them. And Allah says, 
says that tell them tell the, the hypocrites la illa mentally munafiquna if the munafiquna the hypocrites refuse to stop the munafiquna are the ones who have just started describing them those who try to deceive Allah by deceiving the Prophet and try to deceive the believers by belonging to the two groups, the disbelievers and the believers. So Allah said to them, if the, if the munafiqun refuse to abstain the munafiqun, there are three kinds of them. And those who have sickness in their minds, in their hearts, they are sick. And the storytellers who create and concoct stories and then disseminate to, in order to, 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 to uh, blow out hatred or fitna, calamities against the Muslims. Allah said, tell them if they, if they refuse to abstain from this, I will make them leave Medina. And they will never be your, they will never be your neighbor. That's why scholars, actually scholars of the Quran agree that why then with this warning but from Allah, the Prophet did not start killing the hypocrites. Because the Prophet knew them by their names. He knew all the hypocrites in Medina. Those who caused torments and problems and calamities against the Muslims. Those who connive with the disbelievers against the Muslims, they know. And they escalate the prices of, because of, of, the, of the commodities, said so that the, the poor believers cannot afford to buy what they, want to want, what they want to eat or want to drink. Because the economy was controlled by the Jews and the Christians in Medina. The Muslims were poor, and most of them were immigrants. They, had, they, had, they came with nothing from Mecca to Medina. So their life was made miserable. They hardly eat twice, not three times, twice they hardly eat. In fact, they hardly even eat once. Some of them will be dying of hunger, of thirst, of accommodation, of cloth because they have all abandoned their belongings in, Ma in Mecca. What they wanted at that time is to escape with their Iman, to escape with their Iman, to escape with their beliefs and faith as Muslims. They didn't care, they didn't care about, what, about worldly belongings, they didn't care. What they were after is how am I going to protect my belief so that Allah will not punish me eternally hereafter. Because all the sufferings of this world, they're all superficial and temporary. For how many years America will sanction the countries it's sanctioning? For how many years ECOWAS will sanction Niger? For how many years? Not even one year. The sanctions has, has been, actually have been lifted. Uh, has, uh, the sanction has been lifted. The borders are opened. and. The electricity is now being sold to them. So what are the benefits of fighting your neighbors, of fighting your people, of the same, the same Islam, the same language, the same culture, the same custom? 
but what's the importance? Nothing. So the ulama of the Holy Quran agree about why the Prophet did not kill the hypocrites in Medina, even though Allah has permitted him. Why he left them with their freedoms to continue spreading mischiefs and hatreds. Number one, reason number one. It was only the prophet who knew who were the true hypocrites in Medina. Even that happened to him by Allah's revelation. Allah will reveal to him uh, this, that person living near the house of those people is a hypocrite. This man that is passing before you is a hypocrite. That person you can see is a, the person behind you. He told them all the names of the hypocrites in Medina. So he was the only one who knew them by names and by appearance. In Islam, the law says, the law says, since the time of the Prophet that a qadi, a judge, should not sentence or execute anybody on the basis of his personal knowledge. Nobody has, nobody has the knowledge of the criminals except the judge. So he cannot be the police, he cannot be the judge, and he cannot be the prison warder. That's why Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr uh, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Abu Bakr Sadiq, may Allah be pleased with him, said, if I see somebody committing adultery, I will remove my cloth and cover him and proceed. I will not shout. And I will not leave him like that. I will cover him with my cloth and leave. He was asked, why? Ya Khalifa, why? He said, if Allah has covered, if Allah has covered them with four clothes, with four gowns, why couldn't I help them with another one? Because if he came and said, I saw this and this committing adultery, he will be lashed hundred lashes. That's why when Umar, Umar asked Ali when he was the chief judge in Medina and he was the Khalifa, he said to him, would you accept, would you, would you accept the witness of a, of a Khalifa when he saw somebody committing adultery? He said, well, if you can provide three additional witnesses and the narration is exactly, it's exact, will accept. But if, where he cannot produce more witnesses to, be, to, to betray his claim or what he saw, then we will have to punish, we will have to give the Khalifa a hundred lashes. This is it. So no judge is allowed to sentence or execute any culprit because of his knowledge because of what he knows, because of what he saw. No. One person, no matter how st high standard, how uh, highly that person is, no matter how his social standard could be, cannot be the only witness leading to the ex ex execu execution or sentences of somebody who has committed an offense. So that's why the prophet did not punish them. Two, the Prophet didn't kill them in order to bring the hearts to that. The Prophet refused to kill them because when he started killing the Hypocrites, even though Allah, then the people say, ah, you see, this Muhammad is killing his companions. Because they behave the same way the Muslims. Their women wear hijab and khimar. Their men wear kaft kaftan and, and, and the gabs and everything like Muslims. They, they even tie a mama and everything. So the people would say, ah, we told this is a cult. He is killing his believers. He's killing his followers. So the Prophet refused to do that in order to bring the hearts of people closer to Islam. You understand? Uh, 
Reason number three, why the Prophet didn't kill the hypocrites in Medina. The messenger forbid, the messenger of Allah forbid killing of hypocrites as long as they display Islam. As long as they display Islam openly, even though he knew that they are not good Muslims, not true believers, that is enough. It means they are afraid of the, of the Islamic law, they are afraid of the, of the Sharia. So their display of Islam is enough. Their display of Islam is enough a reason why they should not be killed. At Tabari said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the ruling between his slaves uh, dependent on the outward and entrusted judgment about their sacred beliefs to no one but uh, of his creation. Now, but what he's saying here is that Allah has only given us reason to judge somebody and punish him accordingly with his out, outwards behavior. What is in his mind, we are not allowed to judge him because we don't know what is in their minds. So if in their minds is kufr, we don't know. It's Allah who knows. What we see from them is that they come to the mosque and pray Zuhur and Asr and Maghrib and Isha and Sabah. When it's Ramadan, they, they fast with us and break with us. They go to Hajj with us. They even pay the cart. They even attend all our ceremonies and uh, celebrations. And so since they are, they are exhibiting Islam openly, then there's no reason for us to judge them, to judge them against their inner secrets. Their inner beliefs. We don't have to do that. No one can judge against what is not apparent. Nobody is allowed to judge somebody by assuming or presuming or that he, this man he is not telling the truth. So all the machines they are inventing that will expose a, a, a liar it's not, it's, not, it's not allowed to be used in Islam. The DNA they are using to know whether this, this, this son or this daughter is the real daughter of this woman and that, and that man, it's not actually in Islam. Only what the eyes can see or what the ears can hear, we are allowed to judge somebody. Video recordings, audio recordings, are not exhibits in the Islamic law. And when, the, when Islam was, was saying this, people were saying, ah, how can, a, how can a religion refuse to accept video recordings of what actually happened? How can that happen? Or how can he not receive a video, a, 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 an audio clip? The voice is his own voice. Everything is, 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 a, is a genuine exhibitions. People didn't know that Islam is ahead of them. Now with the, with the invention of AI, you can turn any video into anybody's image. Now you can turn anybody's, anybody's voice into somebody's voice. I can have recordings, your voice, everything that you do, the way and manner you speak, but it is not you, in that sense. So I can set you up with a video. Anybody can be set up in this world today. And we are seeing this in, in our social media, where you see the Russians, the Russian president and the American president and the Chinese president all talking about this and that, but actually they didn't talk about it. You will even see them in the, in the, in the, in the, and the podium, on the podium of, of United Nations, speaking good things, beautiful things, but it's all rubbish. It's not true. They're all inventions by AI, artificial intelligence. That's why Islam, 1,450, 1,400 and years, and 50 years, Islam said, no, 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 don't accept this as evidence in the court. Not. So Islam knew, Allah knew, Allah plans that this is going to happen one day 
and sometime in human's life before they all become extinct. So no assumption, no conjecture. Reason number four. Allah preserved the companions of his prophets since he made them firm against efforts of the hypocrites to corrupt them or corrupt their deen. All the mischiefs of the unbelievers, of the, of the hypocrites, or the, the monarchic code, couldn't deter the beliefs of the Muslims, of the companions of the Prophet from believing in him family. They couldn't shake the iman of the Muslims around the Prophet They couldn't shake the iman of Umar, or the iman, or the iman of Abu Bakr, or the iman of Abdurrahman bin Auf, or the iman of Uthman bin Affan, or the iman of Ali bin Abi Talib. They could not do that. Not, not, even, even the women, they couldn't deceive them to leave Islam and join their parties. They couldn't. Because Allah had protected them physically and protected them also in their beliefs. Therefore, the believer, the hypocrites could, couldn't corrupt. They couldn't corrupt the iman of the of the believers around the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ashafi gave the evidence for the other position when he said, "The Sunnah about someone against whom there is evidence of heresy, and who then denies it and proclaims his faith." And that is, and that he is free from every din except Islam, is is that it is forbidden to shed his blood. Meaning, if somebody has been brought to the to the, to the court, accusing him of nifaq, of hypocrisy, or zindika, or heresy, that we had you saying this and saying that. And we saw you in that place and that place and that place and that, and that place. Would this show that you are now a hypocrite? He said, "Me, I've never. I only been there, but I never. My my faith is, is still very strong and solid, and I don't believe in anything but Islam, and I will never do anything against Islam." Then that person is free from any accusation. Once he denies that. He was what he was thought to be, or accused to be, then he has ceased to be that person, a hypocrite, he is now a Muslim. The utterance of a hypocrite that he is a Muslim suffices in protecting his dignity, and protecting his wealth, and protecting his life. But if in the court of law he said, yes, I said what I said, and I believe what I said, then he will be killed. Because all the people in the court have now become witnesses from what he said against Allah and his apostle. The rule according to Imam Malik, Imam Malik, Imam Malik and Imam Shafi, in one of their, in one of their opinions said, hypocrisy in the time of the, of, of the Prophet is like heresy or stark disbelief. The hypocrisy or the prophet's time is different from the, from the one that we experience today. What we are experiencing here today is when you say a hypocrite, a monarchic, he's doing that just to get worldly, worldly uh, 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 gifts, compensation, recompense. That's all. He wants an appointment. He belongs to PDP, but he believes he works for, for APC. So he'd be called upon to be given maybe a ministerial appointment or an executive secretary or executive chairman of a parasitel so that he will work against his own party for the success of the, his opposition. So it's all because of worldly affairs. It's not because of any, uh, of any uh, belief or any uh, aspect of religion or nothing. No, no, no. 
Just, I want to eat. I want to continue eating. I enjoy eating. That's why they are, they are like that. They have two legs. Their one leg is in one party, and the other leg is in, the, is in another party. This is called hearsay in Islam. When you have one leg in disbelief and one leg in, in Islam, you are, you are, a, uh, you are a hypocrite. You are a monafik. It's called zandaka or zindikizim. Zindikizim. If there is firm evidence against him as indeed that the heresy is killed without being asked to repent. If there are witnesses, enough evidence against him, then such a person will not be allowed to live again. Just like, just like a soldier who was caught helping the enemies against his people. If evidence were established, he, he gets killed. So if, if somebody is, is working against Muslims, while he belongs to the Muslims, but is working against them, and he was caught, and evidences were sufficient to hang him, such a person should be hanged. Hanged. So hypocrisy is a disease that needs time and efforts and strong belief to be healed. May Allah protect us from hypocrisy of any type. Continue. Now I have how we can do. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ A hypocrite or Manafikun, they have good way to argue to protect their stand in matters of community interest. When they are, they are, they are told, stop what you are doing, stop spreading mischief, stop spreading corruption. Stop stealing our, 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 wealth, our wealth. Give us the palliatives. Build schools for us. Build good roads for us. Protect us from the bandits and the, and the terrorists. When it is told, when they are told, do not cause corruption on the earth. Because anything that will endanger the lives, properties, and religion of a nation, of a community, such a thing is called corruption. Corruption in, in developing countries, not only that, corruption anywhere in any society, if corruption has become endemic, then that, that country will never progress, will never develop. If corruption is accepted as normal as normal as the norms of that of that of that country, then I'm sorry, that country will never grow unless we abhor and fight corruption. We will never progress and will remain complaining and complaining and complaining. The rules will complain and the rules will, rulers will complain. The rule will abuse and castigate and cause the leaders and the leaders will become hardened against the vote, against the voters, their voters. Each group is causing the other group. And each group is afraid of the other group. Nobody is protected, nobody is immune, nobody is respected, nobody is 
we are all cousin each other. In this kind of society, then corruption has become endemic. When you, when you said to them, do not spread corruption on earth. You don't understand our tricks. What we are trying to do, we are trying to put things right. We are trying to bring development. We are trying to, 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 develop, to develop the economy. We are trying to fight poverty. We are trying to fight ter terrorism. We are trying to fight this and that. This is what you are doing. You don't, you, you don't appreciate what you are doing? Okay, re-elect us. We will put things in shape. So that's why corruption is the opposite of righteousness. When Allah says, La tif sudu fil ard, do not spread mischief or corruption on earth. It means anything that will distract justice, trust, security of any type, food security, life security, any security, then such a thing is corruption. Anything that can mar these three important things in a nation, then such a thing is corruption. And one thing with corruption is it grows every day and grows faster every day. That's why in this country today you can, you can accuse anybody. The ulama are not exempted. The reverend fathers and, 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 uh, and, and pastors are not exempted. The politicians are not exempted. The emirs and the kings and the chiefs are not exempted. The masses are not exempted. The rich, the poor, everybody, we're, we're all culpable. It has eaten deep into the, into the society, such that those who are not corrupt are very few. And they can't make any, they can't make any difference. Why? Because corruption pays you immediately. Pays you now, but tomorrow, no guarantee for you. No guarantee for you tomorrow. It gives you indomie now, now. Eat indomie now, very fast food. But you don't have guarantee for the next meal. You can make your soup sweet by sprinkling, sprinkling maggi and salt. But nothing to cook the next day. This is exactly our, 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 our system in this country. Give me now, I don't care about tomorrow. I, I, I live today, I don't know whether I'm going to live tomorrow. What of your children and grandchildren? I don't care, they are, let them be on their own. This is exactly what we're suffering here. This is our, our, our lots. Do not spread corruptions by corruptions by disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not love and respect any leader that is corrupt. Any politician that is corrupt has been marked to be corrupt. He was a local government chairman, he was corrupt. He was a governor, he was corrupt. A senator, he was corrupt. Don't elect him again. Anybody inducted, don't elect, don't, don't again, don't. But we forget easily. Once you can give me money, I will do anything for you. I am for sale. Give me money. And you get what you want. So we sold ourselves to ourselves and nobody has value. Nobody has value. We had anything in Nigeria. We kill anything in Nigeria. Our currency has no value. 
were not respected anywhere in the world. Today, you can't go to Dubai, you can't go to Egypt, you can't go to India, you are sick, you are taking money to them. You can't go to Ch China, you are taking money to them. But all the same, you have to suffer, you have to get somebody who will talk to them before you can get simple visa. Today, Saudi Arabia, I want to go for Umrah. No, no, no visa for me. People are, are, are looking for a visa for 2 million naira, a visa that is supposed to be free. No, 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 no one is giving you a visa even for 2 million naira. Hold your money, we don't want it. You can't go to our country. You spoil your country and you are coming to our country. No. So Nigerians are despised all, all over the world. Even when you have 10 year visa to go to, to go to BUK, you have two or four years visa to go to America, they, they are t telling you, please come. What you steal from your country, bring it here, we keep it for you. Come and lubricate our economies. So we are, we are killing our economy and lubricating the economies of the West. What kind of people are we? What kind of people are we? When the world, when there was no prophet in the, this world, before the prophet system was sent to this world, the entire world was corrupted. Nothing good. People were living if they, can, if they can live. And those who cannot live are eliminated. The might was right at that time. The respectable people were the bandits and the terrorists. When they come in, because they can kill you, they can abduct you, So we respect them. All our monies are in their hands, but they give us what they want. For us to continue to lick their boots every day. If you can't do that, you are in, tr you are in trouble. So the Prophet was sent to this world, and Allah SWT brought light to this world, and there was peace, and corruption was reduced to the minimum. But when he left, corruption also came back with every force. force. That's why anybody in the third world, especially Nigeria, that says, I'm, I want to fight corruption in Nigeria, it well, won't last. It won't last. Will last. The outside enemies will fight him and the enemies within will also fight him. So even if you, if you, want, to, if you want to rule this country, even if you say you are, you are a trustworthy person, you are an honest person, you are a straightforward person, you are this, you can, when you came in and said, okay, look, do you want to continue as president or you want to, you, you want to uh, cling to your uh, rhetorics? You want to click, 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 cling to your jargons of honesty and uh, and uh, and trust, worthiness, and this. Uh, which one do you want, President? Okay, then stop talking about trustworthiness. Stop. And we have seen a leader who spent eight years in this country, and he did nothing. He did nothing to to. to develop this country in any aspect. So may Allah take us out of these woods and may he guide us aright. I'm going to stop here. When tomorrow comes, inshallah ta'ala, we'll continue with our tafsir. I have not been seeing your questions. I don't know whether you know everything now, alhamdulillah. Uh, so uh, we are waiting for your questions, and um, I will say that please come with your neighbor, come with your friends, come with the wife of, of your driver, come with the wife of your cook, come with your nannies if they are Muslims.
even the even Muslims, you can let them come and understand Islam. Please don't come alone. Also be a source of guidance for some, somebody. And if you do that, if, I, if Allah guides somebody through you, Allah will reward you immensely. May Allah reward us immensely and guide us aright and protect us from corruption uh, within the family and beyond.